Before we get started, make sure you're wearing your headphones for maximum audio experience. Hello listeners, my name is Sophia. And my name is Elle. And welcome back to Rhyme and Reason. In today's episode, we will be talking about the impact of social media. Social media has proven to be a basic necessity, especially right now, where we are in the middle of a pandemic. Social media plays a big role in terms of disseminating information and communicating with those around us. But even I can say that there has been a dangerous spike of social media use in the past year alone. And with this comes different benefits and disadvantages. It's fair to say that social media has become a very integral part of our lives. For you, Ella, how do you use social media in your day-to-day life? Well, I use social media as a way to relieve stress. As you know, I don't really have that many social media accounts aside from Twitter and Discord. And Discord is really more of an application I use for academics and a way to communicate with my peers regarding assignments and projects and all of that. And I use Twitter as a way to relieve my stress and I also use it for my daily news updates. Is most of the time I don't get to catch up on the daily news when it's airing. So I scroll through Twitter to be updated on the daily news. How about you, Sophia? How do you use your social media? I mainly use Discord, Messenger, and sometimes Twitter and YouTube. I use YouTube. Out of all of them, I'd say YouTube is my most used app because I use it as a form of entertainment and also for academics, whether I'm looking for an instructional video or something that can easily explain a complicated topic. For Messenger, it's my main communication app because most of my relatives and friends and classmates are on Messenger and I could easily receive and send messages there. When it comes to Discord, I mainly use it for academic, especially for groups, and I don't really use Twitter that much. Um, If I do use Twitter, it would only be to consume media, not really to post any of my own. That's pretty much it but for the most part my most used ones is definitely messenger and youtube because i can't go through my school year without using those two apps okay so as we all know social media has a lot of disadvantages especially when it comes to students and you know teenagers in general what would these disadvantages be Some of the disadvantages of the overuse of social media is definitely social media addiction. Negative effects on mental health such as depression, anxiety, even social anxiety. The overuse of social media can also lead to social comparison and low self-esteem. There are also instances of peer pressure and cyberbullying. Social media addiction is the driving factor of increased use of social media apps such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. According to Henderson, there are 3.96 billion people using social media today. In the Philippines, users spend a daily average of 3 hours and 53 minutes on social media. Before I proceed, El, can you open your phone? Yeah, sure. I'm holding it right now. <laughs> okay. Um, and... Can you go to the settings? Yeah. And go to screen time. Yeah. And then the apps that you mentioned that you use for communication like Discord and Twitter. Yeah. Can you tell me how many hours you have spent today using them? Today, that would be two hours on Twitter. That's about it. On Twitter alone? Yeah. Wait, what about Discord? Oh, um, Discord, I have no idea because I use it on the computer. (laughs) Oh, okay, okay. So, thank you, Elle. The statistics for this is pretty much more or less accurate. I would believe that there are people who would spend more than 3 hours and 53 minutes on social media. The statistics show that younger users aged around 16 to 29 spent the most time on social media with 3 hours every day. Although this study came out early 2020, I think especially now with the lockdown and quarantine, the average has probably increased by this time. Millennials are reported to spend 2 hours and 30 minutes 
an aged adult between 45 and 54 spend one hour and 39 minutes on social media daily. So gaining likes or retweets or traction when it comes to social media posts trigger a person's reward system. And when this reward system is routinely triggered, it can lead to addiction or social media addiction. According to a study, Instagram likes trigger the same chemical reaction when taking drugs and gambling, since it also releases the same hormone, which is dopamine. It is stated that some individuals will resort to using social media for relieving dysphoric mood states. Like Elle mentioned, and I'm also guilty of this, I also go to social media as a form of distraction or relief. I use YouTube for a for- as a form of entertainment. But when it becomes a perpetual disruptive cycle where the individual will experience temporary satisfaction, they will most probably develop psychological dependence on social media. So social media becomes kind of a pacifier. Instead of facing your problems, sometimes we tend to go to social media to just escape and evade our problems. And the article further states that there is an estimated 27% of children that use social media three or more hours daily and that they exhibit the signs of poor mental health. Globally, 64% of Instagram users aged between 18 to 19 and only 21% are aged between 50 and 64. In the documentary called The Social Dilemma, have you have you watched that documentary on Netflix? Yes, I have. Um, I think I watched it last year. Yes, I watched it last year. It kind of shocked me how they presented the demographic for using apps such as Instagram and Twitter are getting younger and younger. The documentary kind of went into the psychological effects of prepubescent and like adolescent teens going onto social media and being exposed and the effects of being exposed to how social media works like the likes and the numbers and the followers how that mentally affects their self-value and self-worth so i i recommend watching that documentary because it goes into the creators minds the one the ones who programmed and designed the applications that you use they explain how everything came to be how they get you hooked on to using their apps more in an article by Leventhal in 2019 called how removing likes from instagram could affect our mental health it stated that the younger generation of instagram users are more susceptible to social media's reward system because their brain's reward system develops quickly at a young age, while self-control develops much later, which tends to excessive social media use. So like what I mentioned before about a perpetual disruptive cycle of going to social media and getting that kick or the high from getting likes or more followers, since it is like something temporary, it will still leave you with that void feeling. It's just a momentary mode of escape. We talked about self-confidence and self-esteem in the previous episode and how comparing yourselves on social media can affect your self-esteem and how negatively affects your self-esteem and how the person will view themselves. In a report I made regarding the removal of Instagram likes back in 2019, I found out that the overuse of Instagram is also linked to a number of issues such as stunt social skills and susceptibility to peer pressure when it comes to an individual's social health. So in a research, it is shown that children and adolescents that habitually use social media are more likely to be at risk of severely underdeveloped social interaction skills. These individuals struggle with interacting in person despite being socially active on online platforms. I think it is important to note that talking on social media or talking online is really different from talking in person. 
Like the social skills that someone needs to have when talking in person is different from online. Because in person, there's verbal cues and non verbal cues. Whereas a non verbal cue, such as like shuffling of your feet or blinking really fast or clammy hands, it's something that you have to learn as you go. And if children and adolescents don't get as much exposure to and experience in speaking to people in person, they can't develop their social skills compared to, I mean, they, their, develop, their social development of these skills are stunned. I mean, compared to the people who weren't born into social media, they have more experience talking to people in person rather than majority talking online. So since users typically post pictures or videos comparing the highlights of their lives, exposure to this content will trigger a fear of missing out or FOMO, wherein a person experiences social anxiety since they feel like they are being excluded. So especially nowadays where anyone can post instantly where they are, what they're doing, who they're with, the viewer or the one who follows those accounts will feel kind of left out knowing that they could have been there also. And this triggers, this also triggers social comparison because since people post the highlights of their life, no one goes out and posts the lowest points of their lives all the time. So when people see the highlights of a person's life, they would automatically compare it to their daily lives, which is not really realistic. And what that causes is the feeling of missing out or, you know, the tendency of social comparison. This FOMO negatively affects an individual's self-esteem, which leads them to compulsively and constantly check their social media to ensure that they do not miss out on anything. And again, this ties in with the perpetual cycle. Since we constantly want to know what's going on, it becomes part of our routine. Like we routinely check Twitter, we keep refreshing the page on Facebook just to be in the loop of the things that are happening. I realized this recently because I've been evaluating why I was so negatively affected when I went on to Twitter back in 2019, I'd say. 2019 or in 2018. I would reflect why after opening it for a couple of minutes, after that I would feel so drained and so negatively affected. And I realized that it was because one of the factors to that was we are not designed as humans to be exposed or absorb that much information all at once. Like right now, especially with the pandemic, with all of the bad things happening around us, it's nice to be informed, but it's also important to regulate that because it's not natural to be exposed to that much negative information and fake news and it becomes overwhelming. And so even though we like to be constantly informed, just regulate the amount of information you intake every day. A research on the effects of Instagram use in Singapore referenced that a prior research showed that individuals feel socially anxious when comparing themselves to others. The study referenced that individuals often selectively reveal themselves or reconstruct their appearances, characteristics, and or identities. The need to gain likes among teens has also driven some to alter their appearance and surrender to peer pressure and other negative behaviors that they otherwise would not attempt to do. This competition for likes has also exacerbated cyberbullying, name-calling, rumor spreading, and harassment, which has also caused increased suicide rates among adolescents. I have seen a couple of clips from especially TikTok where people would just do very dangerous things clearly for likes and attention. Sometimes people also go to the extent of having to change something of themselves because they are constantly bombarded with negative comments and being cyber bullied because of how they look or who they are. And that's one of the biggest negative effects. 
at least for me, for of social media is even if you don't recognize it, you are somewhat subconsciously peer pressured to do something that you probably wouldn't do or not comfortable doing just because others do it or famous people do it or famous influencers do it. And it's not aligned to your values and your characteristics. And somehow, you know, to gain validation and approval from people, there's a tendency to kind of be molded into what is more likable in a sense, which is something that younger children should be knowledgeable about. It's important to stand by your values and beliefs and not be. Peer pressured into doing something that is dangerous or will cause them harm. When it comes to physical health,、um, an article published in the Time magazine reported that the photo based platform Instagram received the worst scores in a survey published by the Royal Society for Public Health in the United Kingdom on how different social media platforms affected their physical and mental health. Although Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube, and Instagram received low scores in sleep quality, bullying, body image, and FOMO, Instagram received the worst scores for body image and anxiety. The authors of the published study stated that social media posts create unrealistic expectations that produce feelings of inadequacy and low self esteem. Okay, so as you mentioned, social media has become a very reliable tool in our lives. It is the source of entertainment and education. Everyone owns at least one social media account of some sort. Like I mentioned earlier, I own two, which are Twitter and Discord. But while most people focus on the bad aspects of social media, I will tell you a little bit more about the benefits that are often overlooked. Social media provides a quick access to information and research. This would entirely depend on what type of research you are conducting, but regardless of what it is, social media is one of the tools that we have at our disposal. As Sophia mentioned earlier, there are a lot of fake news and misinformation all across the internet and social media. But this is one skill that you have to learn. You need to know how to distinguish the information that you are looking for and what type of information is fake. Just be careful when it comes to doing research on social media and research in general. Just make sure you get them from very credible sources. We also use it to stay connected with friends and family worldwide. I have a lot of family abroad, and sometimes they would FaceTime us when, when there are celebrations like birthdays, Christmas, New Year's Eve, and all, all that sort. s Social media is a way to stay connected with friends and family. It is also an amazing platform for job opportunities. Looking for jobs can be very difficult, especially for new college graduates and high schoolers. Here in the Philippines, it is difficult to find a job if you do not have any prior experience. I got my first job through an advertisement posted on Facebook, back when I still had Facebook, and it was in a cafe called Wildflower Cafe. Companies have also used social media as a way to reach the masses. Product advertisements are often posted on social media because people are always online. Company marketing staff use the 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. rule, or so I've been told. The 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. are the times where most people are online because this is either the time they get up in the morning or they have lunch break at work. People like me sometimes rely on social media to be updated on what's happening in the world. Like I mentioned earlier, I use social media to read the news, to scroll through the news when I don't have the necessary time to watch the live version. Although it is still better to watch the news on the television, listen to the radio, or read the newspaper if they still make those. But sometimes there are unpredictable times which make you miss out on the scheduled news forecasts that you rely on. So you rely on social media since the news on social media are always there and you can just scroll them even if the news were posted hours ago. During the pandemic, distance learning has become the new norm for education, students and teachers alike. Uh, rely on social media to update one another and to share educational materials. Social media is also an interactive platform. It helps introverts develop better so- socializing skills and interaction skills. 
Social media does help strangers interact with one another. Whether it is about a random topic, like why is the traffic at EDSA, or maybe something as simple as cute puppy paws, I don't know. But social media brings together strangers that, are, that eventually become friends. Social media just ignites and establishes new connections with strangers all over the world. It doesn't matter where you are or what you like, just as long as you have something in common with one person. Studies have also shown that social media helps improve communication and reading skills for, for most people. I don't remember where, but I think I've watched this on the news a couple years back where there were kids in the slums and they'd have no books, but they have free Facebook on their phones. They would learn how to read through Facebook. So as you mentioned, social media ignites and establishes new connections. We can't deny that social media has bridged communities and has prevented loneliness, especially for those who otherwise are socially isolated. A research paper released last year pointed out the positive impact of social media in the mental well-being of those involved in specific interest online communities, especially minority groups. Hence, social media allows individuals to form online connections, which otherwise would not have come together offline. An article pointed out the positive impact of social media in the mental well-being of those involved in specific interest online communities, especially minority groups. The article reviewed the insights from a Netflix documentary that we mentioned previously called The Social Dilemma and referenced a previous research that showed social media connects marginalized teenagers, such as those in neurodiverse communities and the LGBTQ plus communities. And social media allows these individuals to form online connections, which otherwise would not have come together offline. The article further concludes that psychologists have found that it is not necessarily the social media platforms that are negatively impacting our mental health, but the content that we are exposed to on these platforms. Another researcher stated that possessing strong social media relationships is associated with positive mental health and well-being. Social media allows individuals who are physically apart to reconnect and strengthen their relationships. As Elle discussed about the use of social media, when it comes to finding a job, social media also plays a role, especially in promoting businesses. So popular platforms like Instagram have a significant role in business and influencer engagements. And as you said, popular brands and marketing companies are now utilizing social media platforms like Instagram for online promotions and advertisement. Businesses see Instagram as a valuable medium to showcase their product and or service visually through photos and videos and build an online presence. So I feel like when brands open up to the, the public and create their social media accounts, their products and the company becomes even more accessible to people. And their products and services becomes part of their feed, something that they routinely see. And so kind of an easy marketing strategy if you come to think of it because brands can easily pay a person or like an influencer who has a lot of followers, they can pay them to promote a certain product or service and they don't need to spend as much compared to before where companies usually have billboards or TV commercials. This way, it's kind of an instant way to disseminate a new product out there and to gain traction. I'll be honest and say that I have had experience with social media addiction in a way. I remember back when I still had Facebook, uh, I was addicted to the scrolling effect that it had. And it is very addicting because, like you said, it's like you know, a slot machine. and. Yeah, it's kind of a, a mindless activity. It's it's something that's uh, it is yeah. monotonous. And the thing is, yeah. I remember I would lose sleep because of it. 
I would spend hours during the night time where I would just read through Facebook or Twitter or Instagram even. And I think the latest that I've ever stayed up because of social media was mm-hmm. 1 a.m. I think. I don't know the exact time, but I think it was around 1 a.m. That was the latest time that I've slept because of social media. It's one of the reasons why I deleted Facebook and Instagram because I hated the fact that I sleep late. And, you know, for the longest time that you've known me, I like sleeping early and I really hate sleeping late. Unless, of course, it's, you know, it's for school or it's really for something important. Like, for example, this podcast. We're recording this podcast right now. And as a time check, it's 10.20 p.m. (laughs) (laughs) I talked a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, but hey, we are, we're learning a lot, right? Well, I hope the listeners are listening mm-hmm. and I hope the listeners learn a lot as well. But what about you? What bad experience have you had regarding social media? I mentioned this earlier that around 2019, 2018, when I was in senior high school, I used to dread the idea of going on Twitter. And until now, I don't have the Twitter app on my phone. I just open like a a tab in Safari. And then after it, I close the tab right away. I feel like now I got into a habit of not staying on Twitter for so long because, you know, like you said, the scrolling effect, that's how they get you with that um, repetitive motion of scrolling and refreshing the feed. Since I don't have the app, I can go voluntarily. And even though that can be dangerous for some people, like they can go whenever they want. For me, it's at least there's not an app to tell me that you need to go to the, you need to check your notifications, you need to check your Twitter feed. At least I can be in control in that way and not be dictated by the app itself. Even for my um, Messenger and Discord, I use an iPhone and I hide it in the app library. So sometimes, um, I'm sorry, Elle, sometimes I don't get to reply to messages right away because I forget because there's no um, red bubble telling me that you need to check this right now. There's kind of like a sense of urgency when you see that number, the red bubble pop up, you just can't help but click right away. And so by eliminating those visual cues to basically where the apps quote unquote control me, I could easily be more mindful of the times that I do pick up my phone and do check those apps. At least in that way, I am in control. And yeah, I I have experienced negative effects where, like I said, it affected me mentally. One of the researches that I've read is actually disproves the fact that social media negatively affects you mentally. They basically say that social media only exacerbates or worsens what you already have. So if you have low self-esteem and you go on social media, you will easily be affected negatively. But they found that if you're a positive person and you go on social media, you'll less likely be comparing yourself to other people. And so, yeah, that's my experience with social media. So the thing about the badges, as much as I want to turn them off, I can because, you know, especially for this You have obligations. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of students do also ask me for advice when it comes to assignments, especially. And, you know, the quiz, our quizzes, our holy quizzes. Quizzes are nerve-wracking. So every student needs help when it comes to quizzes. I mean, even I do. So sometimes I would message people in Discord, low seeking help, and yeah. I do get a lot of direct messages when it comes to quiz days and assignment deadlines. Some of the disadvantages of the overuse of social media are low self-esteem, social comparison, social anxiety, negative effects on mental health such as depression and anxiety, tendencies of peer pressure and cyberbullying, and social media addiction. And the benefits of social media would be social media provides quick access to information and research. It helps us stay connected with friends and family worldwide. It grants us new job opportunities and sometimes it also helps us keep in touch with the world by sending us news updates. 
During the pandemic, social media has granted us distance learning. Since it has become the new norm for education, it helped students and teachers stay connected, especially in times of online classes. Social media is also an interactive platform for strangers to conduct new conversations, and it ignites and establishes connections with strangers all over the world. But above all of that, I could say that I'm very grateful to be in this generation that has access to social media, especially during this pandemic. It really helped people cope, especially those who feel very socially isolated from the world. It helps them reconnect with the people that they love. In that way, social media wins. And that has been Rhyme and Reason, where making sense just makes sense. You have just listened to the season finale of Rhyme and Reason. Thank you for listening to this podcast. You can support us by subscribing to our podcast on the Anchor app. The support for our podcast will allow us to produce more interesting episodes in the future. If you liked that episode, please hit that like and that subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below to let us know what you think about the episode. Follow us on Twitter by clicking the link in the description. We recently launched our Twitter space so listeners can share their thoughts and insights they have gained from the podcast. We really love seeing you guys' support and receiving your comments. So if you have the time, do drop by. And who knows, you may just become our guest in an episode. Stay tuned for the announcements of our second season in our Twitter account. Again, see you next time.